So what what I what I couldn't understand what I've heard about it so far is 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 any of it set in Exeter? Does the location move towards well, Exeter? Yeah, well Exeter was um the um what's the words? Exeter was the um the, I can't think of the word but the, the regional word. hub. Yes, the regional um hub of the West and um so they were marching up there to try and gather forces from there because if they could and that was the only place that wasn't succumbing to um you know that wasn't joining this protest in trying to save their old ways and they thought if they could if they could take their demands through there and gather reinforcements that would hugely support their cause and then they could continue up to London and um take their you know, demands to be listened to, to you know, to be able to preserve their traditions and their way of life. So the the city of Exeter was closed off. The people in charge of Exeter had closed the city walls and yeah. wouldn't let these marching protesters in. Right. Um, and so, so our character. So is the play set in Exeter? So the play moves. The play starts in Poundstock, and then you hear the stories of the people who went on this march. The news is brought back to Poundstock, so you hear of things in Exeter, things in Sanford Courtney, um, but Poundstock is the hub. Um, but the the story, it's really a story for the whole Southwest. It was how life was changing, oh, yeah. how people were impacted by that, and if they'd managed to have got Exeter kind of on their side which a lot of the local people were we think, it was more the people in charge who wouldn't let it happen, then they would have had a lot more power and a lot more chance of, of making everything yeah, happen. Yeah, because it's really important to remember that lots of the people in Exeter were rooting um, for the um, the protesters, but then um, they sent uh, the Royal Army which um, held a lot of mercenaries that they'd um, brought over from abroad to try and stamp out this so that they could continue to take over. And there were some key places in Exeter that were part of this. At the bottom of Stepcop Hill, which is where the house that moved is, um, there they, they they dug a d tunnel or they you know, in, improved a tunnel and they filled it with gunpowder or, or explosives of some form and they were going to light that and before they managed to light it the people of Exeter, well the, the governing body in Exeter had, uh, had actually um, poured water down the hill and it stopped it from happening. Okay. So that would have been one of the key entries they need. And then at, at um, where the, the college is, at St, it was St David's Hill, was mm -hmm. it? St David's Hill. Um, that area was one of their main places that they were setting up camp so that for, for this siege that they were hoping to set up to stop food and other things coming into the, the city. So the, 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 there were other places as well. The Guildhall, for example, as well. Mm -hmm. the, the Guildhall was, was, um, was part of it. Yeah, lots, lots of places in the city, and, and as I said, there are um, lots of things telling us that the, the actual people in the city were on board. They wanted to work with um, the uprising that was going on, um, but it was the people who were in charge who had closed the gates and said no. And really interestingly, the Exeter City motto translates from Latin to, I think it's always faithful or always true, and that stems from the fact that Exeter stayed true to the king. So something that some people were very proud of, actually, in our story, you think, oh, if you'd just gone with it, things could be very different.